What's happening, folks? If you want to impress a lady, there's no better time than now. Show her your romantic side by taking her to a picnic in a flying car. She'll be ecstatic. You're great with animals because you'll have a talking robot dog in the back. And once you get to your destination, a drone will magically bring a nice chilled bottle of Veuve Clicquot. I'm Nick, and we're about to ooh la la. Disclaimer, disclaimer, everything I just said is just a concept, but according to Google, it's gonna cost you approximately a quarter of a million US dollars, lady not included. Where can you get these toys? Well, ever heard of Xpeng? The EV behemoth from China unveiled some incredible concepts in late October during its tech day, presenting three revolutionary products at once. They got a humanoid robot, an electric car with two seat drone in the trunk, and a luxury sedan that transforms into a helicopter. So Tech Day last year, the company unveiled a four-legged robotic pony for kids, and this year's surprise for the audience was the humanoid bot PX5. Thanks to its ability to keep its balance, the robot can easily navigate rough terrain such as lawns and gravel. It looks like your grandma walking, but it's incredibly stable. It can even play soccer and ride a Segway. And it doesn't do that squatting thing most robots do today. The arms are functional as well. Each can lift up to six pounds or three kilos of weight, as well as perform tasks dexterously. Some quite useful, especially after a night out, like pouring a glass of water or handing you an Xbox controller. Nick, that's all fine and dandy. Where's the flying car? All right, all right. Expon Aerot, a subsidiary of Expon Motors, has unveiled their groundbreaking Land Aircraft Carrier Modular Flying Car. It's a three-axle minivan with a passenger hexacopter inside. Among other things, it's equipped with an extended-range hybrid power system that can recharge the air module multiple times. The 4-5-seater itself is designed with a three-axle, six-wheel configuration that allows for a 6x6 all-wheel drive. This and the rear-wheel steering should give the driver the ability to go anywhere, including fairly steep slopes. The air module in the body is an all-electric, two-seat manned vertical takeoff and landing vehicle for low altitude flights. Did I mention vertical flight? Now, whether this concept will ever be realized remains to be seen, which is a bummer, but it seems this is what transportation of the future could be like. But there was another model presented at Expon Tech Day 2023, and that was the eTall flying car, which combines the design of a supercar with an intelligent cockpit that easily switches between driving and flying modes. And depending on the mode, the steering wheel and dashboard transform. And this is not just a rendering. You can see the actual car at the show that embodies this crazy futuristic concept. We look forward to live video of the flying car testing on real roads in all available driving modes. Would you like to test drive this bad boy? Leave a comment below and we'll see what we can do. Also, Check out Soramichi from the Japan Mobility Show 2023. This conceptual model is dual purpose, capable of moving both by air and on the road. The developers, Prodrone, said that the device can fly 30 miles or 50 kilometers with a 110 pound or 50 kilo load. It's designed to solve the problem of delivering urgent cargo to mountainous areas and individual islands during, for example, natural disasters. And to reduce the risk of falling on someone's head in areas with good roads, it will simply drive. Did you know Japanese authorities are actively supporting these kinds of concepts? I didn't know. They're not alone. In the US, Boston Dynamics engineers taught Spot how to conduct dialogue with visitors during tours of the company's lab. They used a combination of visual Q&A model and a little language model called ChatGPT, plus other technologies like speech-to-text and text-to-speech. They also created multiple personalities for the robot, a Shakespeare-era tour guide, all right, a teenage girl, why, and a sarcastic Josh. And as a result, the robot could not only narrate material, but also answer visitors' questions, including unexpected ones. For example, when Spot was asked who its parents were, it led the tour goers to the previous generation of Boston Dynamics robots. The tour itself goes like this. The robot takes photos in each room and tells what it sees while composing poems and complimenting visitors. 
Although the engineers admit that it's not without failures, the robot dog has sometimes lagged and spewed fake information, which is hilarious if you've ever tinkered with GPT and asked it the right questions. Boston Dynamics engineers intend to further develop options for integrating language models into robotics. Let us know what you think is a great application for this in the comments below. Talking about all things DARPA got their hands on, the U.S. Air Force has confirmed that its Northrop Grumman B-21 Raider heavy strategic bomber has begun ground taxi tests in Palmdale, California. The secret tests may indicate that the first flight of the stealth combat aircraft is scheduled for later this year. Interestingly, previous publications from the B-21 Raider tests caused a flurry of disbelief online, with many users believing the photos to be fake. However, the U.S. Air Force Command claims that the machine does exist. They plan to purchase at least 100 bombers with the first batch entering service by 2021. If you want to know more about weapon technologies and their applications, check out Bill Hicks. Back to Japan, Sensei Technologies have demonstrated a giant four-legged robot car. The SR-02 is equipped with a four-passenger cabin and can move forwards and backwards using different gates, tilt its body to a 360, and crouch by bending all four legs to disembark passengers. Now, the standing SR-02 is 6'2", which is a wee under 2 meters tall, and about 11 feet long, which is 3.4 meters. The control software is the Azratech V-Cedo robot system, which allows the robot's movements to be controlled by an onboard human or external operator. The SR-02 also has a brother the SR-01, which is a Transformer robot introduced in 2018, and they both should be in an amusement park if you've ever seen either in action. Talking about seeing, NatureEye decided to one-up Google Street View and give users all over the world the opportunity to enjoy nature without getting off the couch. To do this, it offers everyone to remotely control drones in protected areas around the world. You have to choose a location, book a flight, take an online training course that ensures you don't drop the drone on an elephant's head, and that's it. Oh, and that'll be 95 US dollars, thank you. Then you take control of a DJI Mavic 3 Enterprise or Mavic 2 Zoom quadcopter and a local guide will talk you through what you're seeing and what's worth seeing. And if things go wrong, don't worry, the drones are equipped with obstacle avoidance and low noise propellers so you don't actually scare the animals. And best of all, you can take cool pictures from the drones and share them with your friends. No selfies with a crocodile, obviously, but not a bad deal. If you're up for it, there's a link in the description. Don't try this at home, kids. Starship delivery robots, you know, the small white boxes with six wheels, have been grazing around the University of Oregon campus for a while now. But it wasn't until this academic semester when an 18-year-old student had this brilliant idea to report that one of these robots contained, you guessed it, an explosive device. This led to a shutdown of the robots, campus pandemonium, and the arrest of the prankster. We couldn't get a hold of the perpetrator, but if we did, we'd tell him to look up Jim Brewer and his pranks. A stone throwaway from Oregon stands Amazon's HQ. As soon as Digit, the humanoid robot, got its first job at Amazon's warehouse, it already had a strong competitor, proving that a robot simply transporting boxes doesn't need such a complex design. We already told you about EvilBot, but since we're talking humanoids, the makers of the self-balancing two-wheeled bot got busy and rolled out some specs. For example, speed, 35 miles an hour or 60 kilometers an hour instead of 3 miles an hour or 5 to 6 kilometers per hour. Lifting and carrying a load weighing up to 140 pounds or 65 kilos instead of 40 pounds or 20 kilos. And yes, its rotating grippers are less dexterous than humanoid arms, but they are enough to grab and move a box. At the same time, the waist-high robot can reach shelves as high as an average person's chest. A compact robot weighing 90 pounds or 40 kilos can race with boxes up to 8 hours in a row while taking care of slopes up to 45 degrees and driving on uneven terrain. And if it does fall, the robot will get up by itself, something Digit has only recently learned how to do. Now, hypothetically, if you had a warehouse, which bot would you go for? 
The makers of EvoBot didn't stop there. Their concept with an unpronounceable name, zero raised to the power of three din, is that Odin or Odin? I'd go for Odin. It's an autonomous jack of all trades powered by Mechanum omnidirectional wheels and air suspension capable of working both indoors and outdoors. This machine moves at speeds of up to 22 miles an hour or 36 kilometers per hour using LiDAR, GPS, and 3D camera systems to navigate and discern its surroundings. It can position itself precisely around a pallet by lowering itself onto a grabbing pendant, unfolding those strong arms to lift it from both sides using the same openings as a forklift. It then moves the pallets with impressive maneuverability even in confined spaces. And since we're on the topic of close quarters, former Google Nest engineers have reinvented the robot vacuum cleaner. Matic doesn't need internet access, moves like a human, relying on vision and object recognition, and cleans dry and wet dirt at the same time. Let me reiterate, Matic doesn't send a map of your house or any other data for that matter anywhere, which is a concern for many potential buyers. Instead of LiDAR, sensors and soft bumpers, the robot uses five RGB cameras and a pattern recognition system to see and understand the world around it. It doesn't have to poke at your shoes to realize there is an obstacle in front of it, and it will distinguish a toy from a pet. Oh, and the robot can be controlled by voice and gestures. Just wave your hand and say, clean up over there, or clean up that bathroom, and it's off to do the job. You can also activate regular patrol mode where the robot will periodically go around the house and clean only where it's needed. And when its container is full and all dirt, including liquid dirt, is collected in one bag with absorbent crystals, the robot will simply park itself by your garbage can and let you know it needs to be cleaned. The bag, like a diaper, is simply pulled out and thrown away. Maddox already got financial backing from Jack Dorsey and Matt Rogers, but Here's a genius solution that'll turn this venture into a unicorn. Attach a Wally head on it. Right? Anyone? Meanwhile, a Canadian company, Deep Trekker, has unveiled the Onyx Amphibious Drone, which can traverse rough terrain and even get 50 feet, or 15 meters, underwater. On land, the drone can be controlled wirelessly. Underwater, though, it needs a cable, which kind of reduces its appeal for autonomous missions. It's one thing to send Onyx across a river while drinking your juice in the hood, and quite another when you have to drag a cable behind it. As far as specs go, the body of the unit is mostly made up of anodized 6061 aluminum and the wheels are shoehorned into all-terrain rubber tires. The Onyx comes standard with a 1080p front-facing camera with remote tilt capability assisted in the dark by four LED spotlights totaling 1100 lumens. Buyers can opt for an optional 4K camera or make an even bigger upgrade by adding rear and side cameras to the drone. Power is provided by a 232-watt-hour lithium-ion battery. A single charge should reportedly last for two hours of use, and all of this at a friendly price of 43,000 US dollars. At a price like this, what is this thing meant to do? Enlighten me in the comments below, please, because I have no idea. This next one, though, I can get behind. If you live in an area where snow tends to accumulate, then you should check out Everblue Technologies from Japan because they've developed an autonomous snow removal drone. The drone is based on a unit from Suzuki and was presented at Japan Mobility Show 2023. The electric robot weighs 200 pounds or 90 kilos and moves at a speed of three to four miles per hour or six kilometers per hour powerfully raking impressive snowdrifts. On a single charge, it can run for five hours or drive 18 miles or 30 kilometers. Isn't it weird that Canadians thought of the Onyx and the Japanese thought of the snowplow? Shouldn't it be the other way around? And here's another one. ABB, together with Swedish companies Baladin and Elcap, has completed successful tests of the industry's first robotic system called robot charger. They must have hired the same people to name this thing who came up with the Sydney Harbour Bridge. What robot charger does is it makes mining and tunneling safer by automatically placing explosives in predetermined locations underground, hence the term charger. 
the few manual processes in the mining industry left are about to become one shorter. Blasting schedules in underground mines vary, but in large mines, you can hear up to 15 blasts a day. The robot charger automatically detects boreholes and fills them with charges without human presence, eliminating the need to be in the mine. Now the developers are finalizing the tests, the goal of which is to perform a complete sequence of blasting operations in an underground mine and transfer full control of the robot to the original customer. And after that, the robot charger will be offered to the mass market. Who is this secret customer ABB is working for? Hmm. And while Robot Charger is busy on Earth, the German Research Center for Artificial Intelligence is building robots to explore lava caves on the Moon and Mars. These caves could be a temporary base or storage area for astronauts, but they are unexplored and can be extremely dangerous, which is why five European countries put their heads together to create Corob X. It includes three autonomous rovers of different scale and complexity. Rover 1 is like the black guy in horror movies. It's first to dive into the abyss, while other rovers follow. The largest of the three will carry chargers for itself and its smaller brothers, which is a functional touch since it might take some time to explore a cave on the moon and have no sunlight. No clue as to how Corob X's are going to communicate with one another or their operators on Earth, but we shall keep you posted. And finally, ChatGPT scored another victory for humans or over humans? I'm undecided, help me out. By hooking up an AI speech transcriber to ChatGPT, this TikTok mastermind aced a job interview at Lockheed Martin. Kind of a big deal in the military industry complex scheme of things, if you ask me. While the interviewer was in the process of asking a question, this bright fella could already see a nuanced answer on the screen, ChatGPT. How do you go about building an F-16? There's tons more, but I'm out of time. Like this video, subscribe and or hit us up on Telegram to join our growing community of robot enthusiasts. Until next time, bye bye.